T-minus 9, 8, 7, 6, 3, 2, 1, 0, and lift off. Western's Martian habitat adopts a unique 3D printable inner spherical shell and outer parabolic dome. Through the utilization of space, material, and constructability, the habitat is set apart, creating a superior internal environment, stable and protected against the harsh Martian climate. This is made possible by three distinguishing features. The first key aspect is the internal shape of the structure, which is made possible by printing over an inflatable pressure vessel an essential part of the cargo brought to Mars. This allows our 3D printer to create a suspended geometry without jeopardizing the structural integrity during the build process. This pressure vessel will also later serve as the primary barrier for maintaining an internal atmosphere, which the structure itself could not hold alone. The second feature of note is our entryway system. The entryways extend from opposite ends of the structure and serve as the primary entrances and connections for astronauts, rovers, and equipment that will be essential for the daily work on Mars. These connections are laid out on the main axis to permit future junctions with other pod units. The last major component to highlight are the cross beams that form the main structural backbone of the dome. These beams have been optimized for the required strength under reduced gravity loading and Mars level wind loads while providing an adequate factor of safety. They will be printed in tandem with the pressure vessel, thus providing continuous shape and strength. The interior layout is where this design truly sets itself apart. The entire interior is based off of separating wet areas from dry areas. Wet rooms, such as the lab and the kitchen, are on the opposite side of the habitat from dry rooms, such as the bedrooms. This allows for a concentration of plumbing and mechanical units within the wet side of the habitat, which decreases the overall amount of resources necessary to create this habitat, as well as eliminates excess materials running through the structures, floors, and walls. The placement of the various rooms in our habitat also demonstrates an intuitive understanding of how astronauts would move around and use the space. The concentration of the bedrooms and bathroom alongside an interior hallway creates privacy and allows for further separation, not only of the wet and dry sections, but also of the public and private. Our public wing includes the main living area, workstation, kitchen, and laboratory, and the private wing is composed of the bedrooms and bathroom. Privacy is necessary for astronauts who will be living in close quarters for an extended period of time. This goal is achieved by creating a central wall that acts as a hallway barrier to separate the bedrooms from the rest of the space. The wall will act functionally as a retractable divider, which can be used to create a quieter entryway towards the bedrooms, or can be adjusted to direct movement between adjacent attached units. The sizing of the different areas was informed by the NASA High Seas Mars Habitat, and the spherical shape allows the rooms to fit into a well-spaced but compact unit. Additionally, this design affords the ability to combine multiple units into a large community of habitats. The two hatch openings directly across from each other allow for easy connection at either end, and with the creation of a central node building would lead to an expansive community that traverses the Martian landscape. Our vision of the Martian habitat combines effective structural engineering, the ability to build using Martian materials, an intuitive floor plan that creates private and public spaces while combining mechanical systems for each construction, and the ability to connect habitats to create a community on the planet's surface. We believe that future Martian expeditions can benefit from our design to complete NASA's mission, to explore the universe and search for life, and to inspire the next generation of explorers as only NASA can. The universe is full of life. Mars X House is autonomously constructed using indigenous Martian materials to form a pioneering and durable habitat supporting future human missions to Mars.
Search Plus, short for Space Exploration Architecture, has designed X-House to take advantage of the unique capabilities of 3D printing to provide maximum radiation protection from galactic cosmic rays while celebrating human life through vital connections to natural light and the Martian landscape beyond. Partnering with APA's core and industry leader for their pioneering building techniques on Earth, the team is working collaboratively to adapt unique innovations in additive manufacturing for the autonomous deployment of human habitats on Mars prior to a crew's arrival. Mars X House realizes the next steps of habitat design with ISRU indigenous materials and introduces an innovative approach to exceed current standards for radiation protection, enabling the human residents not only to live, but to thrive above the Martian horizon. We arrived at this distinct shape based on the structural, functional, and programmatic relationships. The sleekness of the design is intended to minimize the dust storms that may come along. Our unique solution, located near the equator of Mars, starts out with the arrival of the space-faring module, whose exterior shell scoots off as it lands similar to the Curiosity rover, leaving behind a prefabricated core. After landing upright on the Martian surface, the five-axis print arm extends from the top of the core and prints a foundation and footing layers utilizing materials found on the Martian landscape. Immediately following the completion of the foundation, the print arm will transition vertically to begin printing a concrete shell. Secondary print nozzles will begin printing HDPE layers on either side of the concrete, effectively sandwiching the Martian concrete in the middle. A portion of the shell construction will give way to the equipment hatch, allowing for connection to future habitats. 
When the shell construction reaches the height of the laboratory level, floor plates and supporting structural members will deploy from the pre-manufactured core, which will rest upon the newly printed shell. If desired, a slab layer can be printed on top of the plates for a cohesive floor. The shell construction will continue progressing upward. Daylight will be allowed into the habitat by means of reducing or eliminating portions of the central concrete layer in the exterior shell makeup to have just the HDPE layers as the skin. The location of these daylit portions will strategically correspond to programmatic elements of the habitat and will highlight the intricate nature of 3D printing capabilities and parametric modeling. The grade level will contain the access to the SEV and connections to future habitats. Access occurs from a floor hatch and the airlock. A garden area is located outside of the foundation wall area and accessed from the laboratory level. The design of an oblong projection in the shell allows for a great deal of daylight for gardening and food production. The medical exam and procedure room, along with an emergency shower, are located nearby should any urgent action need to occur from outside the habitat. The lab is located adjacent to medical. Next to the lab is the communications room. We then have a stair that leads to the living level and one that leads down to the ground level. Next to that is the garden room that can be used to grow plants from seedlings as well as plants that require different environmental conditions than the ones out in the light at grade. After the lab level is complete and the shell reaches the height of the living level, another set of floor plates will deploy and the process will repeat until the habitat reaches its terminal height. On the living level, we have four uniform bedrooms, a recreation area, a dining boardroom, and an exercise area. The food prep and storage areas will be built into prefabricated core. Besides the stair that goes down to the lab level, there also will be ladder access to the floor above. The upper level will house the 3D printing operations and storage. When complete, the pre-manufactured core will contain all of the plumbing, ventilation, and life support equipment required for the duration of the astronaut's stay, including toilet facilities, a kitchen, and laboratory hookups as required. Communications equipment will be pre-wired into the central core and will extend through the shell near the top of the habitat. Marsha is our proposal for a Martian surface habitat. It's born of a careful response to the Martian environment and a synergy between structural, architectural, and construction principles with human experience at the center. The first task for any Martian home is to hold an Earth-like atmosphere. A simple trade study of spatial and material efficiency shows that a vertically oriented cylinder is the best formal basis for a surface habitat. Apart from being highly effective pressure vessels, they provide the greatest ratios of usable floor area to surface area and usable floor area to volume and diameter. Reducing surface area means using less material under less stress. Reducing volume means reducing energy loads on mechanical systems. And reducing diameter directly reduces structural stresses, especially at the base where uplift forces will require anchorage into uncertain ground. Unlike domes, they do not produce unusable overhead volume or unusable perimeter floor area. Therefore, the most direct way to reduce structural loading and maximize usable space is to reduce the diameter and add space vertically. This configuration also lends itself exceptionally well to joining and separating mission activities in a meaningful way by level, avoiding the need to divide one large area into lots of small, confined spaces. Finally, vertical cylinders are also inherently the most printable pressure vessel, and their resulting smaller footprint aids in construction by reducing the printer's required range of mobility. Apart from pressurization, Mars's drastic thermal swings means that any structure not allowed to expand and contract will fail. Our solution to this is twofold. At the ground, we render the shell and its base as a single structure, a flanged shell that moves on sliding bearings at its contact with the ground while clamps and soil anchors secure the flange against uplift. And inside, we separated the pressure vessel from the habitable area entirely, resulting in a double shell system with many architectural uses. Since it does not hold an atmosphere, the inner shell is free to be light, airy, and highly mass optimized. 
By way of the large, water-filled skylight and intermittent windows, the space between these two shells acts as a light well, connecting every level with diffuse natural light and circadian lighting. This unique space allows for a stair to arc gently from floor to floor, using support from the shell itself. Being printed, it offers infinite possibilities for integrated ducting, for routing airflow to where it's needed, moving central clean air from top to bottom with local climate control per level. It also provides constant access for maintenance and repair of the wall. Finally, it's an interesting space that adds dimension to daily life. Indeed, missions present stresses and challenges that can't be solved at the operational level and must be addressed spatially. The layout must reflect the strict flow of tasks typical of space missions. But since sustained social and mental health are also mission critical, habitats should offer elements of surprise and literal room for the crew to slip outside of an overly prescriptive existence. Marsh's layout is zoned with both of these principles in mind. At ground level, the garage is the interface with external systems and explorative activities with a supporting wet lab. Just above is 34 square meters of joint dry lab and kitchen acting as the main hub. On the third level are the individual cabins, sanitation pod, and hydroponic garden. And at the top, the bright sky room is dedicated to informal recreational uses and exercise. Each level has at least one window, which together cover the full 360 degree panorama. In this alien environment, construction sequence and materials must be rethought entirely. We are formulating a material specifically for 3D printing on Mars, basalt fiber reinforced polylactic acid. PLA is a strong thermoplastic that is not only mission recyclable like other plastics, but mission renewable using bioreactors fueled by mission waste. It also has among the lowest coefficients of thermal expansion among plastics, crucial to achieving composite action with chopped basalt fiber, which was added for tensile strength. Basalt fiber produced from local rock is also among the most effective insulators known. Marsha is printed in successive layers tied together with continuous pores through integrated voids, granting true structural orthotropy. Welcome to the Zophorus Habitat. The Zophorus One mission set out to cool the dwelling, a habitat inspired by biology and designed with an easily expandable modular footprint. Prior to construction, Tremendous preparation is necessary for the astronauts' arrival. After the lander touches down, rover robots are deployed for regolith collection. Following optimal site selection, the lander seals to the ground to create a pressurized environment for printing, protecting the print process from the harsh Martian atmosphere. During rover material harvesting, Martian aggregate, ice, and minerals are collected, tested, and processed. Aggregate mixed with cement derived from Martian carbonates and water, create concrete suitable for habitat construction. The lander then prepares for the printing phase. Beginning with HDPE, a highly recyclable thermoplastic, the nozzle prints slightly ahead of a second nozzle printing Martian concrete. This method provides the necessary support structure for the 3D print, which enables printing of highly sloped overhangs. The lander printer also contains robotic arms that maneuver to place prefabricated parts throughout the printing process. The shell of the habitat is composed of a structural outer shell and an airtight inner layer, much like a bicycle tire and tube. The thick and firm outer Martian concrete shell structurally confines and protects the thin and flexible inner layer of HDPE. Because Mars experiences tremendous daily temperature swings, Thermal cycling causes concrete to expand and contract, which ultimately leads to fractures in the concrete. To mitigate cracking, the outer surface of the habitat includes a solar-oriented HDPE shading system that shields portions of the concrete shell that are exposed to the longest duration of direct sunlight, significantly reducing the magnitude of thermal stress while minimizing material use. Additionally, 
The reflective setting layer is integrated into the thermoplastic reinforcement. This reinforcement is used in two different ways. First, the solid thermoplastic strands provide primary structural resistance. Then the secondary strands web inside the shell for binding. Through the main suit hatch is the communal unit. The hatch leads to an interior suit airlock to protect the EVA suits from the Martian environment. This unit is the largest space in the Zophorus habitat and is the primary hub that connects to the other modules. The communal module also serves as the dock for the Mars rover. The mezzanine level, with its natural lighting, expansive views, and surrounding vegetation, provides the crew with an ideal space for social interactions and remote operations control. The hydroponic gardens assist with oxygen production and CO2 absorption. In addition, the external translucent radiation shield can be activated to protect the crew during peak radiation exposure hours. The crew quarters contain four bedrooms for rest, leisure, and privacy. Each space contains storage for personal items, emergency pressure suits, and a viewport. The crew unit also contains a sanitation room equipped with plumbing facilities. The laboratory module provides a flexible space for studying Mars, complete with work surfaces, computer stations, lab equipment, and communications technology. Electrical and plumbing systems are centrally located for easy routing. The lab also features a second rover hatch to enable quick loading and unloading of field samples. The Zophorus habitat has the unique ability to grow with the demands of research and crew. The mobile printer is equipped to build and make repairs on site while also serving as a backup pressure vessel in case of an emergency. The Zophorus habitat, building a new way forward for space exploration and human habitation.